Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. My name is John Pollock, and this is where we discuss all of the news happening in the world of mixed martial arts. On today's show, we have new bouts added to UFC 182 and 183, including the welterweight fight that was scheduled for this year. And Chris Weidman makes news in New York. Chris Weidman had an eventful day on Thursday after leaving his home to pick up a training partner at LaGuardia Airport. Weidman was on his way when he heard a woman screaming for help and discovered an elderly woman outside of her home covered in blood from a fall through a glass table. Weidman called 911, was placed on hold, and then tended to the woman with help arriving 20 to 30 minutes after Weidman discovered her. The woman is now in hospital and recovering from the fall and a cut to the back of her head. The fight that was originally scheduled for this past summer between Tiago Alves and Jordan Meehan is once again on the schedule, this time for January the 31st at UFC 183 in Las Vegas with MMAJunkie.com breaking the news. Meehan has been victorious in his last two fights, stopping Mike Pyle in his last outing while Alves returned to action after a two-year layoff this past April where he defeated Seth Bashinsky. A flyweight bout has been signed for UFC 182 on January the 3rd as Luis Gaudino will meet Kyoji Horiguchi. Gaudino pulled out of his last fight with Patrick Houlihan earlier this month when he came down with pneumonia. After defeating John Lineker in May of 2012, Gaudino has fallen to Tim Elliott and then had a win over Phil Harris overturn when he failed a post-fight drug test. Horiguchi, the former Shudo bantamweight champion, has won his last eight fights, including going 3-0 in the UFC thus far. And TMZ reported that on Tuesday night, John Copenhaver attempted to commit suicide in his prison cell. Copenhaver is currently incarcerated and awaiting trial where he faces 32 charges stemming from a brutal attack to ex-girlfriend Christy Mack and a man named Corey Thomas and then going on the run for a week. The Las Vegas Review Journal added that there were suicide notes found in the cell as well, with Copenhaver being placed on suicide watch inside of the facility. And we are joined by John Ramdean to chat about everything that is going on in the world of mixed martial arts. We have a few fight announcements as UFC 182 continuing to grow for the January 3rd card. It's headlined by John Jones and Daniel Cormier. Now getting as a flyweight bout, and then you just look a few weeks later to the Anderson Silva Nick Diaz card, which gains Jordan Meehan and Tiago Alves. Meehan and Alves, that was certainly a fight everyone was excited about when it was first announced for earlier this summer. Injury prevented that from happening, and now going to it a second time around. Yeah, I mean, we had Jordan Meehan originally supposed to take on Tiago Alves, and then I think Brandon Thatch stepped in, and then Brandon Thatch, or Jordan, that fight got scrapped. I think this is a very dangerous fight for Jordan Meehan because, you know, he's so young, and I know his, him and his team. They're confident that they can quickly rise up the welterweight ranks, but Tiago Alves seems to be a different animal from the lower end to the upper echelon of 170 pounds. But uh, if Jordan Meehan can manage to get past this guy, because we all know how good Tiago Alves is, all you have to do is go back and look at his fight with George St. Pierre, arguably, you know, top three or top five anyways, in uh, welterweight in, in terms of uh, Muay Thai skills. So I think that Jordan will be more than happy to oblige this guy in the stand-up department, but will he uh, emerge victorious? Who knows? And that was one of the, the kind of quieter comebacks this year was Thiago Alves, yeah. who missed two years of action since 2012, comes back, looked great against Seth Bashinsky, and it's often that camp at ATT that I think at the end of this year we should really look back at just the guys that were producing the most per capita, it looks to be out of ATT. Robbie Lawler, Hector Lombard, Tyron Woodley, you add all of us to the mix, among so many others there. It's, it's a camp that I think often gets overlooked. I think what, when you look at uh, mixed martial arts, and I think some of the specific camps, some of the big camps, it all goes in cycles. You know, one year it'd be Greg Jackson's team that does well out of Albuquerque, or the TriStar team that does well in Montreal. But right now, as you mentioned, ATT looking to do very well because all of the welterweights on that team, are, you know, they have fights, they've been successful, they all get to help each other, so it only makes sense. Uh, we mentioned Chris Weidman there in the news, saving this elderly woman who fell through a glass table. And with Weidman right now, he's dealing with that hand injury right now. The Vitor Belfort fight is going to happen at some point. We're probably targeting February or March of next year. I Vitor love the probably. Belfort, <laughs> probably, because I think if there's any title fight that's on the books right now that you can add probably to, it's that one. I can just see so many things going wrong with that middleweight title fight. Uh, but it's an extended wait right now for Vitor Belfort, who I think is somebody that wants to have the fight yesterday. That's true, but at the same time, you look at uh, you know, the UFC and all their roster, Vitor Belfort, I think, is one of these fighters that has the luxury of, you know, if I have to stay out for two years, so be it. My pockets are lined. 
I don't have to worry about paying my bills, so all I have to do is focus and make sure that I'm prepared to face the best fighters in the world, because that's what's coming for Vitor Belfort. There's no step back you know, or step down in competition. Vitor Belfort is only going to be facing the best fighters on the planet. So, you know, I'm sure he's more than happy. I know fighters want to fight. They want to go out and compete as much as humanly possible, but he's going to wait for this opportunity, and however long it takes Chris Weidman to get himself healed, Vitor Belfort will wait that out. Uh, as we look ahead to the remainder of the Bellator slate of shows for the rest of the year, uh, Friday night they've got a rather minor show, Josh Neer and Paul Bradley. Next week we've got Marlos Kunin debuting, we've got Bobby Lashley back, as well as Emmanuel Newton defending his title. And then November 15th is their big card they're loading everything onto. Bonner and Tito, Will Brooks and Michael Chandler. But now we're going to see not only UFC 180 that night, but now World Series of Fighting is saying they're going to be putting on a card with three title fights. I see World Series of Fighting being the casualty here on that particular Saturday night. Is this a smart move for World Series of Fighting to try to get in on the action here and hopefully make this kind of this three-way option for MMA fans? Absolutely not, because the only people that know about World Series of Fighting are the hardcore fans, and the only way you're going to attract the hardcore fans is to have a hardcore type fight. And I don't think, I think when uh, you're comparing it to the UFC and Bellator or Strike Force <laughs> because of Scott Coker, I don't think, I mean, we're all going to watch, you know, not necessarily uh, during that time, but we're going to find the fights online. Do, do you think the World Series of Fighting has found an audience that is theirs at this point? Like, I truly believe there are fans that just watch Bellator because it's free, it doesn't cost them a lot, and it's a different form of MMA. It's not a huge amount of people, but it's some. UFC clearly has their own audience. World Series of Fighting, I don't know who's cho choosing to, cho to watch World Series of Fighting when you've got Spike TV that's in 99 million homes and is putting on a free card. Who are these people that are going to be watching World Series of Fighting that the, night they're live? The, they're the same people that uh, post on the underground. They're the same audience that have supported mixed martial arts. They're the ones that, you know, have watched Deep and have watched Pang Craze and watched Legacy and Titan Fighting. So I think... You don't think those people are watching either UFC or Bellator They are night? going to. They're going to be watching that night, but they'll go back and watch World Series of Fighting online as well. And well I'll be it's going to be a bloodbath on November the 15th, probably when the <laughs> numbers come out on Monday afternoon. For John Ramdean, I'm John Pollock. More Fight News Now Extra is coming your way.